Okay, um, there's your heading. Now, what I'd like you to do is, having made that heading, if you've, especially if you've got it in loose leaf, I'm just going to take this off. Um, go back to the first question we did yesterday. I think that was Johnny, and he didn't, he didn't throw it. I think he just took his co coin, coin, and he just dropped it. Remember that? Yeah? Okay, go back to that question. Now, remind me, what questions did we ask about that scenario? What were we interested in? We said he dropped it off the edge of a building. If I remember right, we didn't know how tall the... It was just a building of indeterminate height. Um, but what did we ask? I think it was like, yeah? Where and how fast it's going after five seconds. Good, okay. So, after a certain amount of time has passed, okay, we were interested in um, displacement. Where did I just put it? That's weird. In displacement and velocity. Okay, good. Now, uh, let's extend this a little bit further. I think, wait, sorry, remind me again. What were the answers? I think for velocity, we got how many meters per second? What did we get up to? 40 minus. Minus 40? 49, right. Okay, and how far did it go? It was like 122? Strictly speaking, negative. Okay, good. All right, now. What we've got uh, from this answer is some things about this scenario that are frozen in time, okay? Now what I want to do is change the question a little bit, same scenario, okay? And um, see how it relates to something that you actually know in calculus very, very well, but we haven't connected to motion yet, okay? So instead of saying after five seconds, I'd like to know, I'm going to think about this placement. How far, how far has the coin... How far has the coin traveled between 5 and the next 5 seconds? So, in other words, 10 seconds. Okay? So, I want to know how far it travels in the uh, second lot of 5 seconds. Right? He drops it, 5 seconds passed, then we start a, um, well, a measuring thing. We've got that spot. Let it travel another 5 seconds. Where does it get to? Okay? Now, what will we need to know in order to work out, in order to solve this question? How far? Have we traveled in that time? What extra things will we need to know? Okay, since we already know where the coin is after five seconds, all I need to work out that actual distance, right, is where it is at 10. Okay, so when t is equal to 10, bless you, what do we get for displacement? What was our equation for displacement? Was it minus 4.9? T squared? Yeah? And what was our constant? Do we have a constant? No. We didn't have a constant, right? Because we started at the origin. Okay? Um, so, sorry. Well, this is uh, the general one. So let's substitute 10 in there. Okay? So that's minus 4.9 times 100, right? So minus 490. Okay, pause. There's a number. Does it make sense? Is it a sensible answer? Yes. I think it is. In some ways, it might seem counterintuitive, because you're like, it took me five seconds to travel this far, and then in another five seconds, it goes a lot further, right? Uh, like, almost th three times further between there and there. But that's the way acceleration works, yeah? Okay. Now, therefore, to get to this answer then, what am I going to do with these two? From my t equals 10 value and my t equals 5 value, what am I going to do? I'm just going to take the difference, yeah? So I'm going to, uh, one way to say it is total distance is equal to uh, where I am at the end, which is x of 10. Remember, x is a function, okay? Minus x of 5. Okay. Now, just before I, I go on and finish the working for that, just be careful. 
The reason why we can do this, okay, is because, and this is the right reason why I picked the example, okay? The coin, it travels and it never changes direction, yeah? It's, it's always going in the same, it never, it's monotonically decreasing, if you like, right? That's the reason why I can use this. If the coin <laughs> miraculously changed direction, okay, turned around somehow, I don't know, uh, a bird caught it or something, okay? This, this wouldn't be able, we couldn't use this approach, why not? You can tell me why. What problems would there be with it? Ah, okay, right. So, this is, uh, displacement is a vector, yes? So it has, uh, it's all about distance from an original place. It doesn't tell you necessarily how far you travel, okay? So, for instance, if you've got a, um, yeah, you've got a person, and they're running laps around the oval, okay? And they run around and around and around and around. If you have a look at the displacement function, I don't know, how long does it take you to run around the oval? Say two minutes, okay? On a, on a, good, on a good day. T equals zero, you'll be at the origin, zero. And T equals two, you'll be back at the origin, okay? So if you did this kind of thing, your total distance would be zip, and you'll get really depressed. You're like, after two minutes, I didn't achieve anything. So, we can use this kind of approach because it, there's no change in direction. Okay, but later on when there are changes in direction, you'll see we have to use a bit more of a um, sophisticated approach with a graph. Okay? Alright, now, anyway. This is minus 490, minus, minus 102.5. I'm going to highly recommend that you don't shortcut this step here. Don't write plus. Okay, even though it, it is plus. Because it's so easy to get mixed up with directions. Uh, and also, what this shows is, you understand what's going on, you're taking a difference. That's what subtraction means, okay? Alright, what's it equal to? Three, Minus six, seven. three, sorry? 367.5. Three, okay, great. Alright, so there's our answer, not too dramatic, okay? But I wonder if you can see what this process has to do with this, which we haven't introduced yet to do with motion, okay? Can you see that? This line here, see that, okay? That's basically a definite integral. That's what we're doing with a definite integral, right? We would probably write it like this. Um, you've got some kind of, you integrate something, then you get its result, right? We're calling that x. And then you evaluate it between upper and lower bounds, right? Like so. Okay, does that make sense? So in other words, um, we can actually approach this question Without knowing this, this is, this is what I'm talking about, to get our distance, right? You told me about the displacement uh, equation. You went straight to here, okay? But to know how far I've gone, I don't actually need to know displacement. I can just use velocity. Can you see how it works? Because we got x just as a, an integral of v, right? We said x is equal to the integral of v dt, right? So therefore, I can say the total distance, in this case, okay, is the integral from 5 to 10. Those are the times I'm interested in, right, of my velocity function. Okay? Now, why, why do this? Why introduce a uh, definite integral when it was just as easy uh, for us to say, okay, where am I at 10? And where am I at 5? Well, the advantage that this has is, number one, um, you don't need to know what the actual displacement function is, okay? See here, you know, we had to work out what this constant was. It was zero in this case. In the next question, it was like 40 or something like that, okay? So that takes a little bit of extra work to work out what that constant is. Why doesn't it matter? Think back to definite integrals. Once you work out the constant, if you pop it in, okay, you add it in and then you have to subtract it again because the constant is the same in both of these cases. Okay? So that's why you know, we learn in definite integrals you don't have to worry about the constant. What that means here is, if you want to work out a total distance, okay, as opposed to a, um, a displacement function, you don't need to worry about this displacement equation. Okay? Just take velocity and use a definite integral. Okay? So you can use these boundaries, and you can do exactly the same with acceleration. Right? If you want to work out a total change in velocity, between time is 5 and time equals 10. How much have I sped up? Okay? How much has my speed changed? Okay? We could have taken the same approach. 
we could say well, my velocity at this point at t equals 5 was minus 49. You work it out at t equals 10, and then you take the difference. Okay? But we could just say integrate from 5 to 10 the acceleration function. Okay? So you see, this is this total change and this total distance is really the same question as area. Right? When you're working out area under a curve, that's what definite integrals stand for. All right? So to help you get your brain around using this, <clears throat> is this the lesson? Yes. This is the last set I'm going to give you under two-unit motion. Uh, Seb, do you want to stop that? Thanks.